What's happening, Hardscapers? This is episode 176 of the How to Hardscape podcast, where we talk about how you can start and grow your hardscaping business. And on today's episode, we have another I Am a Hardscaper mashup, where we take 2022's I Am a Hardscaper interviews, where we bring on a business owner and dissect their business, and we focus on a specific single question that we ask each of these business owners and mash it up into one single episode. And today's episode is brought to you by Cycle CPA. If you need accounting, bookkeeping, or CFO services, reach out to them. They are CycleCPA.com. Let them know how to hardscape sent you for $200 off their services. And we'll be talking more about them later in this episode. And today also marks the three year anniversary of the How to Hardscape podcast. So thank you so much for joining us each Monday for these episodes. Thank you for your engagement on How to Hardscape Instagram. If you go to our website, if you bought any of our products, including the spreadsheets and merch, whatever it might be, however you've shown your support, I really appreciate it it over these three years so thank you so much and for today's i am a hardscaper mashup we are doing qualifying leads 2022 edition so we've got this question that we ask every business owner that comes on the show and that is how do you qualify your leads once they reach out to you whether through your website whether through a phone call email whatever that might be How do you qualify them? What questions are you asking them to make sure that they might be the right fit for your business and that you can go ahead to the next step, which would essentially be scheduling that first consultation. So with that being said, we'll let each of our guests introduce themselves and then provide their response to that question. And without further ado, let's get into this. I'm Cruz Loan. I own basically two businesses, Chicago Brick Paving and Chicago Outdoor Designs. Yeah, I mean, most of my um, uh, estimates are that my leads, they come through my website. My phone doesn't ring that much. Well, it does from these scammers and, and all that. But potential clients, they basically, they go on my website. They request an estimate and all that. So when they do that, I get all these questions for them to ask. How do they hear about me? If they're ready to move forward or they're just, you know, getting estimates and things like that. So when I see that, I am already know what they're looking for. And then I call them and I ask them more questions like, have you got another estimate? Um, you know, um, when are you planning to do the work? And I just, you know, questions like that. And and then I go see them because most of the times if I'm I'm gonna go see these clients, most likely I'm getting the job because like I said they're either repeating customers or referrals. So you already almost have the job, you know. So I don't have to ask all these questions. But when I go see them, I start with uh, budgeting, like you know, like what's your budget? You know, they're like, oh, we have you know twenty thousand dollars for this project and all that. Based on that, I show them projects that we have done in the past for about that price you know it's like you know for something like that we can do something like this and things like that i do have a lot of pictures on my phone i used to carry a a, a tablet but i have a note 10 so it's pretty good size and i have all these folders of jobs so it's easy for me to show them and then once they say like you know yeah we're looking for something like that um i go and do a 3d design most of the work we do i i do a 3d design so they can see how things are gonna be you know before we even start the job so that's how basically how i do it so i told the client it's going to be about 500 dollars for the 3d design if you do the job then we give you credit for that you know and things like that i'm jeffrey schmidt of down to earth landscaping and i'm chuck gillum of down to earth landscaping yeah we both get calls still you know we've both been the face of this company for since day one so we both get a lot of leads Now we've gotten to a point where we really try to direct people to our website. Our website has a great uh, contact us page. We get all of their information, what they're looking to do, their budget. And then from there, we can reach out to them. Um, We usually set up a discovery call, chat with them on the phone, kind of just get some more information, see if their budget was realistic from what they put on the website. And then kind of go about the next steps, whether that's uh, a consultation or whether that's moving forward with the design. Absolutely. What kind of questions uh, are you asking before you move forward with a consultation to ensure that you're not going out there and wasting your time and the client, the potential client's time? Uh-huh. 
there are, you know, there are several like key questions to ask, you know, um, budget being at the top of that list. Hey, what are, what are you willing to spend? You know, if they say, uh, I'm not really too sure. Well, does this amount scare you? No. Okay. Well then that gives us a little bit better idea. What's your timing on doing the job? Um, you know, obviously if they're trying to get this project done yesterday and we're booked out until September, you know, it's probably not going to work. Uh, are you shopping? You know, are you, are you getting prices from other contractors? You know, and if so, like, what are you looking to get from us that you weren't getting from everybody else? Um, what are you looking for us to separate from all of the other folks? Um, you know, where do you live? Just kind of generic questions like that. I think the more conversation that you have, the more questions that you ask, you're naturally going to get more out of people. You know, they, people love to talk about themselves, their projects, their homes, all the things. And you'll get a lot of insight to whether they're just kicking the tires, whether they're shopping the price, whether they are calling us for a very specific reason, you know. Um, I think all those questions kind of lead to a general understanding of, of where they're coming from and what they're looking to do. Hi, I'm Mike Barker with Elevate Outdoor Living. So for your, for your first question, you know, kind of the questions are really, um, really digging into the motive of why, you know, why are they wanting this space, making sure that, you know, we're all clear on, on everything that you want. You know, you want a patio, an outdoor kitchen. Well, what do you want? You know, what do you want in, uh, in with the outdoor kitchen and, you know, do you want lighting? Are you going to use this space, you know, day and night? You know, we're selling two outdoor spaces, right? We're selling a daytime space. We're selling a nighttime space. Um, you know, so we want to make sure that we, we get all that on the table. Um, time frame is another one. You know, if, if their time frame doesn't meet our time frame, you know, the relationship just isn't going to work, right? Um, you know, and, and those, are, those are probably the big ones. And, and then making sure that... Um, all the influencers are influencers are involved in the decision, you know, and, and a lot of times I get, uh, you know, maybe husband, you know, calling me and, and I have to kind of dig into, Hey, you know, is how involved is the wife in this decision as well? Because, um, you know, I've, I've had one situation where, you know, the, the husband called me out and the wife was like, this not happening. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was, uh, that's, that's basically the, the things that we need to go over. And then as far as like red flags, um, you know, really just, just price. Like I said, we talk price on the, on the phone and, you know, it's something that I practice. I'm in a, I'm in a group, um, that, you know, is a sales based group and, 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 and just practicing, you know, practice makes perfect. And so, um, going through these role plays and just making sure that you're confident in yourself and when you're, when you're saying these prices, right. Um, you know, and, and kind of bracketing them. And, um, you know, I had one yesterday where, you know, I gave them a bracketed price. Well, the high price they weren't going to go for, but the low price, you know, they, they were, so they met that, that criteria. Um, you know, so if someone isn't willing to talk price over the phone with us, um, it's usually a red flag for us, you know, and, and, um, you know, I've had people where they're just like, can we just want you to come out? We just want you to come out and take a look at the project. Well, I can tell you a lot just with a picture. Right. Um, and so we just, you know, we try and make sure that we check those boxes. And then, um, that, that last thing is that consultation charge. I don't, I don't want the consultation money. Like I, I want your job, right. We want to do the project for you, but, you know, if you're not willing to, you know, invest a little bit prior to, well, then maybe it's just not the right fit. I just want to take a break from today's episode to talk about our sponsor, Cycle CPA. You may have a CRM or project management software in place, but what data are you using to ensure your estimating is accurate? Having a proper accounting setup and accurate bookkeeping done is key to understanding overhead expenses and other costs that must be recouped in your estimates. Cycle CPA is a remote bookkeeping and CFO firm that helps to connect the dots from the financial reports to the hardscape and landscape data needed in order to reach high profits. They provide landscape and hardscape industry benchmarking, job costing financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. 
Cycle CPA's team of accountants are specialized within the hardscape and landscape industry, and you can visit them at CycleCPA.com, and for $200 off, mention the How to Hardscape podcast. Now back to our episode. Hi, I'm Jeremy from Willow Gates Landscaping. So we get probably 75% of our leads through our website. I'm just pointing numbers out of the air, but somewhere around there, the majority of the leads come through our website, the rest are referrals. We do a zero print marketing. We killed that in 2015. We had some marketing that did really good for a number of years. We tried different things. The one thing that really worked well is Valpac. It's a little blue envelope, comes with a bunch of coupons in. Like why would somebody spend 40,000 on a patio because they found a $200 coupon in Valpac? But they did, and it worked well. But in 2014, it's like, wow, this last mailing didn't do so well. And 2015 completely died. And I said, well, all that money is going into our website and social media marketing. And so that's the last print marketing we did back in 2015. Since then, it's strictly online. So we do get a few leads through our social media. Most people are contacting us through our website. You know, really to put a number on how many come through a website versus social media versus phone calls. We don't do any print marketing, so it's pretty much online or referrals. So referrals most times come through a phone, uh, sometimes through a website as well. It's not often somebody sees it on social media and contacts us through that channel. It happens once in a while. Most times they're going to our website first, checking and see a little further and submitting a form there. So my form on the website will capture their name, phone number, email address, and the basic details of their project. And they can add some more comments there if they like. When I call them back, or we said before I call them back, I've already pulled up their home and Google Maps. I know what kind of neighborhood it's in. I don't necessarily check to see what the income level is there. I just look at what's the size of the lot, what the houses look like. And I've got a pretty good idea are they going to be a good fit for me or not. And so when I call them up, I already have that pulled up. I know how far it is from our shop. Is this something that's too far? Is it within our service radius? Do we want this job? And then we start just walking through the process with them and what they want to have done. And I try to get them to talk. I ask a lot of questions. So what do you want to have done? Oh, you want a patio. Okay. Well, do you have any idea how large it might be? And sometimes they have a really good idea. Sometimes they have really no idea. Uh, we want a kitchen with it. Do you need any kind of shade structure? Uh, any landscaping? As the site level? Is it sloped? We need a retaining wall, steps, you know, different things, trying to get a sense of how detailed this project will be. And I don't do square foot pricing. You know, I did that to start way back in 2006 because it's all we, we didn't know how to build a quote. We went to our supplier and said, what's the square foot price? Well, average back then was somewhere around 10 to 12. All right. Now we know what we're selling papers for. That's how we started. But now I do know. But I still have a ballpark per square foot cost. So Mrs. Smith says, well, we think we want you know, maybe a 20 by 30 patio, maybe a seating wall here, uh, some lighting. Uh, do you want a fire feature? Oh, yeah, we did want a fire pit. Well, do you think it'd be wood burning or gas burning? What's the difference? Well, you know, one, your fire pit costs you, you know, 2,000, 2,500, but we had to be at least 15 feet from any combustible surface. So that means I'd be 15 feet away from your house, uh, 15 feet away from the pergola fences, you know, gas fire pits. We got 36 inch, you know, it's only three feet, but you're going to expand because we have 5,000 so we get all plumbing done. So he talked through different things. And then once get an idea of what all they're trying to do, I said, well, just some ballpark numbers. So what you're describing to me sounds like a 20 or 30 cent dollar project or you know, maybe 60 to 100, whatever. Throw out some numbers, uh, what I think they might be at, you know, a kitchen. I'll tell them, you want a kitchen? Well, your minimum, very basic grill island, figure at least 10,000 to start. And, you know, the most complicated one we ever did, some people have zero idea what things might cost. Some come in with very realistic budgets, but they can, well, our feature, you know, that sounds realistic. Or I'll come back and say, you know what? I, I don't think that's gonna work. But we always had a conversation because they're always that person who thinks they can get a concrete paper patio for the cost of a poor concrete slab. And it does not work that way. 
I don't want to block out time on my schedule, go meet them, spend half an hour to an hour driving to their home, another hour or more meeting them, and then find out that, oh, by the way, budget's 3000 And for us to do it, we're looking somewhere in the 20s. You know, there's no point in me meeting them. So budget has to come up in that first conversation. And there's some people who have absolutely zero idea and they have no idea what size is going to be. They have no idea. They don't know what they don't know. They truly don't know what they don't know. And in that case, I'll tell them, well, we rarely do a project under, say, 20000 We just don't really do that. But our average project is probably in the thirty dollars to $50,000 range. And just get the reaction. That's pretty telling. And soon you'll know whether or not they have a budget that's realistic. Hi, I'm E.T. Leger from Montreal, Quebec. I'm the owner and operator of Leger Landscapes. Excellent, excellent question. Um, I don't answer the phone at all. It's been three years now. I don't answer the phone. We have an office uh, administrator, office manager doing an amazing job. I don't, I can't. It just doesn't uh, make sense for me to answer the phone. I'm doing other things in the business. And uh, these guys, these ladies actually are doing a phenomenal job. We have systems in place, scripts for everything. So let's say you call me, Michael, and say, hey, I want to quote. First thing we're going to ask is your address. Make sure we're in the right zone. We're going to ask what type of work you want to have done. And then we're going to make you work for it a bit because we're going to come to your house for free for an estimate. You have to give us something back first. We're going to ask, uh, first of all, for your, I want to know where you live. With, and usually while the... The, the, the customer service rep is on the phone, um, they're typing in the address right away and they're looking at the project, they're looking at the house. And if it's a house like kind of the one in the background here, a uh, million dollar house, we'll just go there right away because most likely there's more than one thing to do. Um, but if it's a little, you know, old house, guys at asphalt driveway and, you know, a couple of loose steps that might be in the front, we'll say, look, um, we do have project minimums. Could you please send us a few pictures first? And we'll ask a couple, couple of knockout questions. If the person says cheap three times in the first sentence, in the first conversation, I don't want to meet them. They're not our, our client. And we, we do charge a premium, but we are, you know, I believe uh, one of the premier companies that do what we do. And so we don't want to, want to make sure that we're a good fit. You know, if you, if you want a Ferrari, you don't go to Toyota. And it's it's not that I say that with, with I'm not trying to flex. It's not that we're a better company, just the way we're building our model. We're trying to service our clients with a high level of, of, of communication. And that costs money. It costs money to have a sales team. It costs money to have people in the office. It costs money to have um, good uh, people in the team, you know? And and so we just tell our clients right away, like, you know, I don't think we're a good fit for you guys. If, if, if we feel right away it's not a good fit, we'll say, hey, we have a friend that we can refer you. Or we have someone that we know that's in your area that we can refer you. And it's always very polite. We never want to ever make someone feel that, like, they're, they're subpar or that they can't afford it. It's not the point. We obviously want to know from the conversation, uh, first of all, what their needs are, what their pain points are. And from then on, we can either refer them away or we can say, hey, ask for pictures. And we often ask for pictures. And if, and if they can't send us pictures in 2021, especially after this pandemic, everyone, even grandmas, no one open a PDFs and take pictures on files. So like, there's really no excuse for not being able to take a few pictures and send them to us. Uh, we're going to send a, a team to uh, me to your place <clears throat> or one of our sales guys who's going to give you, you know, a full evaluation, a written estimate, you know, a, 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 a document, a, doc, a proposal that will be a professional proposal. We're going to take that time and we'll do it for free. Um, but at the same time, I want to make sure you're a good fit for us before we're willing to do that for you. Hi, I'm Chris Morales and I'm the owner operator of Morales Outdoor Living. Yeah, so that's definitely changed over the times. Um, but right now where I'm at is as soon as I get a phone call, I, I try to get the basic information, uh, but I usually send them over to my website. And on my website, I have a contact form. And on there, I basically can cut out a whole 30 minute conversation with questions that are on there, you know, their name, address, email, um, what sort of project are they interested in? Um, I even ask for budgets that they're willing to spend. Um, but I also even what, what I think that I'm including that most people don't is I have a way to upload files and I ask for three pictures of their uh, site, how it looks as is. Um, then there's another uh, place to put um, inspiration pictures and then another one for if they have floor plans or any architectural drawings of the home just to make things a little bit easier for the designs and I guess the estimate. Um, so I, I can I can cut out a, a big conversation by them just going on to my email uh, on the website and filling this form out 
and it gets sent right to my email. And then I sc- that's basically screening them to see if they're a right fit for us. Hi, I'm Greg Burnett, 38 years old from Vineland, Ontario. I'm the president of Niagara Outdoor Landscaping. Yeah, a lot of those leads, you know, either they're going through the website and filling out the form, which is helpful. Uh, in the last year with the demand, you know, we've we found that it was a struggle to keep up with the leads that come in, right? Someone's in the office spending two hours a day dealing with those those incoming leads and, and getting back to people right away, right? So trying to, uh, I think Sean from, from Premier said it, you know, he's trying to eliminate the phone number from my website. So people are, are contacting you uh, through through the web, right? So they're, they're messaging them on Instagram. So um, yeah, trying to kind of eliminate that and, and drive people to our site. And, and then they have to go through the process of filling out our web form and and kind of helps qualify those leads, right? Yeah, definitely. With that lead form, what what do you uh, have there that they, ha- that they need to fill out? What kind of like crucial information? Like, do you ask them for the budget on that lead form or do you wait for that when you actually contact them? Yeah, so the the budget is one of the drop down menus on our on our form. Um, other things that are on that, I guess you know, kind of allows them to, to upload pictures or drawings, and write a description of the work they're doing, kind of how they heard about us. Um, gotcha. So a lead reaches out to you. They've filled out your contact form. Where do you take that from there? Uh, do you have somebody that contacts them on the phone? Do you reply with an email? Where does that kind of process start from that initial contact point? So they've contacted us, uh, whether it's phone or, or email, let's say they've gone through the web, um, we'd re- respond with an email, um, it's kind of all tracked through our CM so- CRM software, we're using LMN, and uh, they would set up a time for a phone call with them. And then, yeah, during that phone call, you're going through and, and asking kind of all the questions to make sure they are this ideal client, client that you're going after, right? So. Hey, I'm Nick from NRX Landscaping. And I'm Rocco from NRX Landscaping. Um, so usually, uh, it'll be a phone call. Nick has his number on the signs. I have my number on the trucks. So it's, I'd say it's like pretty 50, 50 where yeah. the calls come in from, but, uh, typically it's a phone call. Uh, and it, it typically now they're mostly from, uh, referred clients. So what we'll do is, uh, right away, we'll get a brief description of the project. So we kind of know what we're looking at. Uh, and then we will arrange a meeting. Uh, during that, Nick and I typically go to both meetings unless uh, we're working on a project or there's something that requires our attention, but we'll split up sometimes and we'll, or we'll do two meetings at once when it's required, but most of the time we'll go together, especially during the earlier stages of our uh, company. Uh, so we'll set up a meeting, go to that meeting, and then we'll just talk to the client. And, and it's more of a, it's not rushed. Like sometimes we can spend maybe about an hour with a client just kind of just talking. It doesn't necessarily have to be about the project itself, but what we look for is their willingness to kind of open up and we kind of gauge if they're going to be a good fit for us. You know, we, we've had our fair share of clients where it wasn't a good fit and it didn't work out and it was an absolute nightmare, no matter how good the money was, it wasn't worth it. So now we yeah. kind of go there to get a feel for the client and then see what they want. Uh, at that point, we'll take our measurements uh, discuss the project and then Nick and I will do the pricing together uh, and then we'll write up a contract and then send that contract over. Usually there's maybe a few amendments before we get started, sign the contract, you know, we take the deposit um, and then, but we often find during the project, there's a lot of amendments or there's a lot of add-ons. So we'll go through the contract again, you know, learning from our mistakes <laughs> Every day, and there's always a contract. We always go over everything together, but that's how, uh, yeah. And then eventually we start building. Hi, my name is Landon. I own Planet Green Landscapes with my partner, Tom. Um, as far as the sales process goes, it's, uh, we send everybody through our website. We've tried all kinds of different things. And you know, you get a phone call, you forget to call somebody back. Everything goes through our website. There's a contact form there with, um, where we get name, partners, names, address, and then a whole drop down list of things that people are interested in. That's something that we can have within our company. So, you know, everyone from the admin, people, sales, design, they all have that information. Um, so you don't, you know, or you're not looking for someone's email address or whatever. From there, I do all, because I do all the sales and I'll be the person that reaches out to them. That's sort of our pre-qualifier. You know, we ask people if they're willing to invest and if they have a landscape design and if they don't, if they're willing to invest in one, 
we can't do anything for someone who's not willing to invest in a design. So that's kind of a, a bit of a way that we screen people out. And then um, the, our process is I'll generally set up a, a site visit with them and meet with them once I've determined that they're uh, someone that we should be working with. And uh, that's something I probably need to work on. I've heard a couple of people mention how they do the phone call first and they, because you can get in a situation where someone says they want to redo their entire backyard and you're going, okay, great. And then I go meet with them and they're like, yeah, we want to move these perennials over there and remulch everything, which is totally fine. It's just not, we're the wrong company to, to do that for them. So, um, but anyways, then I'll meet with people. We'll do the consultation. I follow up the consultation with an email, basically um, answer any questions that kind of came up, maybe some photos or something we've done similarly, and then a design proposal, which is basically our costs and fees for the design that we would do for them. I am Aaron Colley with Spaces Design Build. Right now, what we're going to do is, I also joined the contractor fight recently, um, Tom Reber's group, um, love it, learning a ton. But our goal is to, when a lead comes in, is I'm going to just send them an email back, thank you, whatnot, schedule a time for a phone call. On that, on that, on that phone call, we're going to, you know, I'm going to ask for, get some pictures, hopefully before the phone call, and then just have a phone call and I'm asking questions like, why do they want to do this? Um, scope, budget, space, approximate sizes. And then I try to bracket that job um, so that, you know, when I do come out there, because we are going to charge um, for that consultation. So they know, you know, it's going to be, you know, and, and when I bracket that, it's it's a fairly large bracket, um, you know, say 20 to 30K or, you know, hey, everything we're talking, we're probably talking 80 to 100. Uh, okay, you want a swimming pool, just the pool alone is 100. The hardscapes around it can easily be another 100 plus. Uh, just giving brackets and then, you know, hey, you know, ask them, what do you think about this? Um, is that something, you know, you want to do? This is Nick Cardello with the Yard Fathers Premier Outdoor Living. So we, uh, so even on my website, I try to divert everybody to our contact form on our website. Um, I try not to make my phone number visible. And then when people do call me, even with a conversation, you know, I'm happy to talk to anybody about what they want, but I always still make them go through the website, go through the form, you know, they'll, they'll put their budget, what they're looking for, description of, of what they're wanting, their address, names, all that stuff. Um, yeah. It, it, do you find there's less pushback uh, with that? consultation charge because of the branding you've created because people kind of know and seek you out yeah i think so and i th also think it's you know demographic i spent you know uh, probably a few years trying to figure out how to reach the people that i wanted um and i think when when you're charging people for a consultation you know and you have that website and you have that brand um, it kind of just speaks for the quality itself. Um, I mean, I also kind of make it worth it as far as, you know, we, all, we give them a design as well. So it's part of that consultation. So we'll get a 3D rendering and uh, overview plan. Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. I really appreciate you for these past three years tuning in every Monday. And if you're a new listener, thank you so much for joining us here each Monday. We have new episodes on the How to Hardscape podcast. And I hope you enjoy these mash up I am a hardscaper episodes to kind of get a gist of what each of these business owners are thinking about with these specific questions that we ask them. And then you can go back and listen to their single interview views to get a better picture of them, who they are, and their business. Once again, check out Cycle CPA for bookkeeping, accounting, and CFO services, cyclecpa.com. Let them know how to Hardscape sent you for $200 off. And we look forward to meeting with you next week on the How to Hardscape podcast.